Hello and good morning, everyone. Only positivity here. I have my coffee with me, ready to explore this new phase of life with you all. So over the past few years, I have gained a whole new perspective on life, and I've realized that life is too short to not be enjoying yourself while doing great things. So come along with me as I explore this new lens through fitness, photography, reading, traveling, cannabis, and much more. Looking forward to the journey, guys. And remember, only positivity. Hello and good morning, everyone. Only positivity here. I have no coffee with me today. Again, I feel like I've, I have just not been not having coffee while I'm doing these things. So um, I do have tea with me, right? I got some Twinnings lemon and ginger tea. I've been having some kind of like throat thing, chest thing, a little congestion. So I've been messing with the tea. Um, and that lemon ginger uh, Twinnings tea is really good. So I got my tea with me today. Ready to kick off podcast number 67 on this playlist that I'm looking to launch called Elevated Thoughts. Now, before diving into the topic of the day, let's go and start with the level set. So, you know, as I endeavor upon pursuing knowledge and life experience through reading, cannabis, fitness, photography, many other things, one habit that I'm beginning to form is traveling. Um, it's very, very um, therapeutic for me, very beneficial to my, you know, my Zen and keeping me grounded. Um, and giving me that perspective on life, right? Not taking myself too seriously, not letting my ego um, run my mind and, you know, my actions and things like that. So I've been really, you know, hoping to, hoping to run with a traveling part of things. So um, for today's podcast, uh, me and my buddies actually recently went to um, Rockaway Beach in Oregon, right? Um, over Memorial Day weekend. So what I figured I'd start doing was just reflecting on my travels um, and, you know, if anyone wants to, to know where I went um, and maybe emulate that trip, recreate it, um, I'll just lay out everything. I'll put links to the places um, I've gone in, in the description of the various podcasts and whatnot. So, you know what? Um, no story. I think the, the, whole, the whole podcast is going to be a story. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, I've written out you know, the, the, day, the day by day uh, transgression of events. And I'm just going to run through it. Um, so you might hear a page flip or two in here. I've just been writing this down in my notebook. But we can go ahead and just like start it up. So the reason the reason we went, um, we picked Rockaway Beach was was because, you know, we we've all done like the big city trips, right? But we're taking my buddy on his bachelor party, right? He's headed out of the country to get married. And we didn't want to like do something big city wise. So we're trying to figure out something remote because that seems to be, you know, the the most beneficial for us right now. Um, last year, we went on a camping trip where we actually, you know, pitched a tent and, you know, we slept outside for, for three nights. And um, it was so relaxing. Um, none of our phones had signal and we were just off the grid, spend time with each other and reflected. So we we're looking to do something like that. The camping itself was a little, um, a little much. And we know, you know, we needed the, a shower and, a, and you know, um, a bathroom and things like that. So we're like, you know, for a bachelor party, we want to be a little bit comfortable, but also try to be in nature. So we were racking our brains. Do we go to, um, do we go to Tennessee? Do we go to, you know, Gatlinburg? Do we go to, um, you know, the UP Upper Peninsula? You know, where are the good spots to go to? We were thinking maybe, um, what was it, Lake Tahoe for a little bit? And then we, you know, I love the the Oregon coast, right? Not the Oregon coast, but maybe the Pacific Northwest in general, you know, um, beautiful views, um, a lot to offer there. Um, and right. Cannabis is legal. Um, say no more. So my buddy actually just had, you know, pitched it. He's like, Hey, you know, there's a spot called Rockaway beach and there's a, um, a forest preserve on the way there, a national park called Tillamook forest preserve or Tillamook national park. And we were like, Yep, this is sounding right. And so actually, you know, we it's it's in Oregon, you fly into Portland. So um, we started putting the trip around that location, right? So we booked an Airbnb, and then we immediately started looking at different activities, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and walk right through it. So we were going from a Thursday to a Sunday, right? And thank God we had Monday off because I definitely needed it. 
Um, so, you know, I had been in party mode for like over a week. I was just so looking forward to getting out, um, getting out in nature with the boys, doing our thing, having some fun. The group that we went with was very low maintenance, very laissez-faire, go with the flow. And that's important when you're traveling with people in certain types of trips, right? And that's something I learned as I continue to plan trips with various groups of people, right? Um, some people have, have more requirements, right? They need more of the, you know, the, the hotel vibe and things like that. And they need to, um, have a, a few more, um, nuances in place, taking naps and things like that intermittently. So, um, and more, more bougie, right? Some people are, are like that. And I'm, I do that all the time. Um, but other people, right? Need minimal things, right? Just to be out in nature, just to be on the beach, um, go sightseeing, hikes, things like that. And no one's wrong in their approach, right? I think um, you would be remiss if you didn't open yourself up to all of the experiences that you can have while traveling with people, right? So coming back, right? We're taking my, my one of my, my best friends on his bachelor party. We plan it out. And then so Thursday arrives and I am giddy as hell. I'm the, the, the day has come. I'm ready. The night before, you know, I had picked up um, some edibles and things like that um, for the for the airport. You know, I don't fly. Um, I don't, I'm not scared of flying. I just can't sleep. So, um, you know, I'll do like a heavy dose of edibles, maybe like 100 milligrams or something. And I'll just, you know, head over to the airport. Um, and then I'll just like, you know, close my eyes on the plane, listen to some music. Before you know it, we're at the destination. So, um, you know, my buddy come, one of my buddies comes over beforehand, right? And we're waiting for the bachelor to come and, you know, we're just, we're catching up, doing our thing. We're in mode. We're ready to go. Um, and then, so my buddy's getting married out of country and, you know, none of us can go and we feel really bad about that, right? COVID is kind of like, you know, really hindered our plans to go, um, out of country for our boy's wedding. So we were like, you know, we're going to throw him this bomb ass bachelor party, but you know, all the guys pitched in and we got him a dope ass, huge Keurig, you know, and we, we all read, wrote a letter to him. We had him read it and then, you know, kicked off his bachelor party weekend with this amazing uh, gift and he's a big coffee addict. So I know he's going to love it when he moves into his new house um, with his to be wife, right? So I'm in mode. I'm ready to go. Um, our flight's at 7.30 PM flying out of O'Hare guys come over around four we're doing our thing we have a uh, you know we just chill out you know smash on this like syrup i got from sunnyside out um in schaumburg so it's um it's like a tincture type thing it's a little bit more liquidy right so you can put it in like a club soda a sparkling water um and it really actually tastes good we got like raspberry lemonade flavor um 100 milligrams right so we do that um we're and that's going to kick in in about an hour or so right so we got time before we, we got at the airport, you know what I'm saying? So he come come over, you know, we smoke a blunt, roll it up, we do our thing. Um, the Uber comes, right? And the funniest thing is, is, you know, my, my buddy, the bachelor, he's Muslim. And you know, our Uber driver is a... Um, is a is a is a muslim dude for sure and he tries to figure out if i'm muslim or not but one of my one of the guys is us two are not and he only says hi to the dude he knows who is muslim which is fine i'm good hey what's up you know we, we out here um just but and we ended up having an actual like really cool conversation with the uber driver as we tend to you know we're a couple of young guys we're excited um we like to carry that energy through with anyone we in- interact with you know um so I go to the airport, right? And one thing I'm noticing is like United is they'll get your ass, right? So um, I was like, you know what? I got a backpack and a little rolly. I'm trying to carry these both on and I'm flying basic economy, right? Um, and I don't really fly United often. So as I'm going through security, the, there's like the, that gatekeeper who who lets you into the security line. And she's like, yo, you don't got to carry on. Go check that shit in. I'm like, damn it. So I go ahead and I got a hard stopped, check my bag in, you know what I mean? With no, no qualms, like 35 bucks, whatever. So we the next thing we do, we get through um, security, right? Head over to um, the airport bar. Um, throw back a few vodka cranberries and like, you know, a gin and club soda. And we're just, we're just catching up. We're ready. We're in mode. All four of us are sitting there excited about the trip, right? So next step is to get on the plane. The, f- the funniest thing is, so with, with United, even though we all booked our, our flights together, 
they we sat in four middle seats so two rows but the four of us each were in the middle seat which was so funny to us um because like we were all looking at each other the whole time just trying to see what we were doing and we were like peeking our heads out into the aisle and just you know wilding out as usual so i watched Zombieland and a little bit of Peaky Blinders on the plane. You know what I mean? Um, and then I just listen to some music and close my eyes. We land in Portland around 10 p.m. And one thing that's interesting about the Portland airport is it's carpeted, right? Fully carpeted. And I, you know, my main concern was, you know, someone's got a vacuum this motherfucker, right? Like, God damn, like you almost have Hoovers, Sharks, all the fucking vacuums on deck. Um, because it is green carpet all over that airport, which is which is fine, you know. Just interesting that they would choose that. Um, so in any case, um, we we head over to Hertz and we're, we got a rental car, right? So I I booked the rental car through my um, through my my company that I work for, right? Now we got a huge discount, so my my overall reservation was like a hundred sixty dollars for. Th- three days, right? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, actually, yeah, so three or four days. At that time, it was $145 per day, right? So I I get there and this this agent, I just just need the keys. I want to hop in the car. I want to go. It's 10 p.m. We have a two-hour drive to get to where, to Rockaway Beach, right, from Portland Airport. So he's like, hey, can I see your ID? And I'm just like, my ID? Like, I, I gave, you have my driver's license. He's like, no, your work ID. And I'm like, nowhere does it say that you need my work id you know and he just like calls his boss and like we go through like 30 40 minutes i'm like dude what else do you need he want me to show him like a pay stub of me working there and things like that and i'm like you know what hurts um y'all gave me a good rate and shit like that but you should really like let motherfuckers know if they got to bring their work ids on these type of trips because hey like i i wouldn't know that why would i bring my work id on a leisure trip and it's one thing if i booked it um, through my company for work purposes, but I was able to book it as like through vacation deals that my work offers, right? So, you know what? Um, no qualms, right? Um, it was fine. Just a little bit of a process improvement there, you know what I'm saying? So in any case, we hop in this little bitch ass Toyota Corolla. Um, I like Toyota Corollas, don't get me wrong. It's just like this one was like extra small for some reason. So we get there um, and then interesting thing about Portland, right? And this is a good tidbit. So you can buy liquor at liquor stores only and liquor stores close early in Portland, like eight o'clock, right? 8 p.m. But you can buy like wine and beer and like seltzers at grocery stores, which are open a little later. So that was our first priority. Obviously, get some snacks, get some liquor, things like that. So one thing I did notice is there's like a huge homeless like situation going on in Portland. There's like tents all over the place um, and whatnot. So we go over to to a grocery store, uh, Safeway, and we we pick up some you know white claws, um, a, a bottle of wine, um, and a, like a bunch of cookies and chips and queso and salsa because we're about to be shitty this weekend, man. I'm on vacation. i um, hop off the diet for a little bit. So we go and pick up those those white claws and all that other stuff, and then we stop at McDonald's, right? So now by the time we're there, it's like 11, 30, 12, right? We still have a two-hour drive, um, and we haven't really gotten out of Portland yet. So in any case, um, we we are um, at this McDonald's, and it's like we wait there for, for about an, almost an hour, like 45 minutes just to get a few quarter pounders, but we're hungry as fuck. So we, we stop eating the parking lot, and then we're on our way. You know what I'm saying? Um, so once you get out of Portland... Um, that we were we we were driving to Rockaway Beach, and um, it's dark. It's pitch black. There's no lights, no street lights, right? And I know that I'm driving through the most scenic things, and it's it's almost scary, right? Um, because I can see these huge shadows. I'm driving through mountains. I know it, but I can't see anything. We're just winding, you know. And it's not unsafe or anything like that. But you just have to be alert, right? And um, luckily, you know, my co-pilot who's sitting there keep each other accountable you know he's whoever's sitting next to me does not fall asleep right you stay awake you make sure the driver is good um we, we chat we everyone's up right so we're excited so we we take and we're and, and we're taking these drives right we're just we're just having fun and finally after two hours right we we get to um rockaway beach 
you know, and we can tell um, we're in this like beach town. And we head over to our Airbnb, which is on Easy Street, right? So at Rockaway Beach, if you search on um, Airbnb for uh, the Easy Beach House, you'll find you'll find the, the the place we stayed at, and the host's name is Rick, and that guy is awesome. Um, the whole family is awesome. They're so helpful. They give you a whole itinerary of things to do, um, and they're always willing to answer any questions. The check-in check-out process is seamless they have a tesla charger there um and you know the property itself once you get inside is such a cozy little house right um they have an awesome balcony with a with a fire pit that you don't have to do anything for all you gotta do is just flip it on right you can sit back there um and uh it's it was comfy the bed the bed was just so cushiony i knocked out immediately so we get back right we get to this we finally pull in um get into the airbnb and um we we just open a bottle of wine you know the quick 3 a.m bottle of wine and we just have a glass of wine and then we knock out right so that's day one when we get there um an instant interesting little journey you know and i i love that right because i'll always remember that i remember it vividly um and you know we're laughing we're joking the whole time even though it's late we're all optimistic we're all no one's angry no one's upset no one's tired and cranky and things like that got a good group of guys we ready we're ready to get up and attack the day and a quick sip of my tea so in any case <clears throat> we get up 8 a.m right and um surprisingly enough and, and it's awesome because you know when we were younger when we like when we would go on trips we would get up late right but now it's like we all have jobs we all have to get up early so we're up we're up in adam and i love that because we make the most out of the daytime there we can always come back and drink and do our thing whatever we make we make the most of the day we get up at 8 a.m um so uh, we need to get some breakfast, right? Because if we're going to start like drinking a little bit, we don't want to, no one wants to die today, right? We want to get up, do our thing. So we head over to this, this, this quaint, cute little brunch spot called Sunrise Cafe, right? It's right around the corner from the beach house. It is literally a three minute walk from the, the beach house, right? And the, the beach itself is a five minute walk, from the the beach house right so you're right on rockaway beach when you stay there which is what we wanted so i got a meat lovers omelet and you know one thing is like the staff is very friendly there um you know we were they came we came in and they were like oh you know four brown dudes right like you know it's fine whatever they didn't they weren't like irked by us but you could tell they're like okay these people are tourists right so right away we're we're happy we're we're, we're talking to the staff we're talking to the waitress and um she's like now we, now we got her laugh and she's telling us what we should do she's giving us good vibes um the owner comes out starts chatting with us um i got a meat lover's omelet my my buddy got uh, like a fried steak delicious food I love brunch food. This food tasted extra savory, you know, extra delicious. Um, and I, I, I would recommend some, anyone start their day there if they had if they're at Rockaway Beach, right? So, right after that, um, right, we're trying to get some bud, right? We're in Oregon, weed's legal here. We're gonna we're gonna do it. So, there's a there's a uh, dispensary literally three doors down from from Sunrise Cafe called La Mota, right? And we go in there. And I get 10 grams of flour. I get a little grinder. I get um, some of those raw cones to like, you know, that are pre-rolled cones and um, a lighter. And I get all of that for $50, right? And to me, that's like, God damn. Because here, like, for example, if I were to pick up that, like, let's say at Sunnyside um, in, in Schaumburg or something like that, it would be like two hundred dollars, probably, you know. And um, I'm sure prices in, you know, in Illinois will will go down at some point. But um, right now, it's really high up there, and I was just dumbfounded, right? I'm like, yo, I'm gonna come back here uh, to 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 that dispensary later on in this trip. So let's do that. So after that, <clears throat> we we just like let's go walk on the beach, right? So it's it's literally right across the street. So we we go on the beach. And my goodness, the, it's it's a beach unlike 
any I've ever seen. It's gorgeous, right? It's the coast. the The sand is not like giving. You're not like trekking through it. It's 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 hard sand because the tide comes up there. You can run on the beach if you wanted to, right? Um, a nice mist, you know, a nice breeze. You'll need a light jacket when you go there, especially around that May time. But great weather. The sun's out, and you just can like. You just you just see these these rock formations. You look around. There's mountains surrounding you. There's lush green trees, um, and you feel like you're in a, on a different planet. You know, it's just amazing. Um, so we spent some time walking on the beach, just you know, being being kids, being like being guys. We were jumping around, jumping over little like little streams, and like we were just joking around, kicking it. Um, feel free to take a look at my Instagram for any of the pictures and things like that. Um, such a wonderful wonderful view from where we were at. So we, 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 we hit that up. We do that. Now, one thing that we want to do um, is head over to Cannon Beach. Now, that's a main attraction when you're out in Oregon, and it's a 45-minute drive from, uh, from Rockaway Beach, from our, from our uh, Easy Beach House. That's what they call it. So we go back. You know, we roll up for the day, right? Pack a few joints, do our thing. We're headed out for the day. I'm headed out to Cannon Beach. So in my opinion, right, Cannon Beach is a little bit more beautiful and a little bit more touristy, a little bit more developed than Rockaway Beach. But it was amazing to stay at Rockaway Beach. And I'd recommend anyone stay at Cannon Beach or Rockaway Beach. Um, You can tell both of these are beach towns. So we head over to Cannon Beach. And again, beautiful beach. We saw a seal. So apparently these seals come up on the beach and they just lay there to like kind of shed their skin. So I'd never seen a seal like just out in the open like that. At the zoo, obviously I've seen them, but there's a seal just chilling on the beach. So if we go for a walk on the beach just for like every day we hit our 10,000 steps at least, right? Um, so we're out there, we do our walk and we're just loving it. We're, we're, we sit down after a little while and we just talk. We're like, man, isn't this crazy that we made it out here? Look how far we've come. We've all been friends now for almost over 10 years, I'd say, right? Over 10 years. And from the, we were talking about the, from the time um, we all met in college and you know, all the bullshit we would get into to now being able to come to Cannon Beach, one of the most gorgeous places, you know, I would say on earth and just be together, you know? Um, and that type of reflection, you know, it brings you so much closer. These guys are my family. I love them, you know? Um, so, you know, it's just it's just amazing to be to be in a place like that. Now, as we're ready to wrap up at Cannon Beach, we um, we head home. I mean, we head to a coffee shop, right? Coffee is a must in Oregon. They got they, they got their coffee game right. Um, so I we get we get the, this like I forget the name of the coffee spot, and we get this like specific drink they have there, but it was robust and delicious. Now the lady. Who was serving us was like hey where are you guys from and we're like you know we're from chicago and she's like oh my god you guys are gonna love it here i oh i wish i could you know be with you on your journey but you guys are gonna i'm just i'm just so i'm at a loss you guys are gonna have so much fun here tell me what you guys have planned let me give you some suggestions i was like hell yeah girl like tell me all this you know i'm like gonna i'm gonna one up you on that energy like this is awesome i need this right this is what i need from vacation um so it was it was just so great how nice she was to us you know and that that was the energy we were getting from pretty much everybody um so on the way home right we hadn't picked up liquor like actual liquor so we stopped by a liquor store pick up some scotch um and you know some vodka and cranberry juice and just head home right so now we've been saving our appetite all day just like minimally eating we ate brunch in the morning because we want to stop at this marina right so we stopped on the way home um which is on the way back to rockaway beach from Cannon beach at a place called jetty's marina um, there's another spot called Kelly's Marina. Go to either one of them. They're amazing on a beautiful property, um, and I would I would just highly recommend anyone go to this go to these spots for the experience. Right? You don't have to stay there, but go get some food there. So what we did was, and again, check out the pictures on my Instagram. I've never had seafood like like raw seafood, like like crabs or oysters or and clams crabs oysters clams yeah so i've never had it like just you know where they catch it fresh um and they just maybe like throw in some hot water for a little bit and then they give it to you right so um i go over there and um me and the guys we get a little bit of everything right crabs uh clams oysters 
So this guy, he just he just puts them all in like a bag, a mesh bag, drops it into a hot water. About 20, 30 minutes later, the shit is ready. He puts it on three trays, one tray for clams, one tray for oysters, one tray for crabs with some butter, right? And we just start going in. We get some lemons, hot sauce. Um, you know, we have a few white claws there, Topo Chico's as well. You guys should check that out. And it was it was a euphoric meal, right? Because you know, in the crab, the meat is in all the nooks and crannies. You got to crack it open. You got to find it. Um, it. You're using your hands. You can taste the freshness of the ocean, right, in it. And I, I honestly thought I wouldn't like it, but I loved it. And we're all using our hands. We're cracking things open. We're reflecting. We're talking. We're chatting. Good meal. Good friends. Beautiful weather. Um, beautiful location. Right on the ocean. And we're just, you know, having a blast. Afterwards, I was, I was stuffed right? But not like, not um, overly stuff. I didn't hate myself, right? And because we were so hungry from not eating the entire day after breakfast. So we go over there and, and the, the staff that works at Jetty's Marina is just so wonderful. They're so willing to educate their tourists. Um, they're so willing to just like, you know, walk you through things, you know, they know that not everybody lives out here. And you know, another thing is all the towns that you'll drive through, there's a town called Garibaldi. Um, it's just like this old school town on the coast, right? You can tell life is simple there. There's there's not too much going on, but it's just so great, so peaceful. Everyone's so friendly. Um, so I would highly recommend um, either of those marinas that I mentioned. And I'll link those down there. Um, so, you know, we head back. We head back and now we're ready to get, you know, start, you know, heavily drinking just a little bit more. Um, so what we do is we come back, um, we start playing some Uno, right? And we're going in and hitting each other with the skips and the draw twos and the draw fours. Um, and it's the game just going on for a long time. We play some Egyptian rat screw too. Um, and we're just, we're just kicking it, right? And we're just, we're, we're talking, we're chatting, we're, we're wilding out, listening to music. There's a point we got up and just started dancing and shit like that. It was awesome. Um, so then all, after that, right, we, we decided to go in the back and, you know, just like start the fire pit up, sit around, chat, talk, you know what I mean? Why not? Um, let's keep this vibe going. So we, we, we turn on the fire pit and then we look up and the stars are ridiculous. There's so many stars in the sky. Didn't even realize, right? The light pollution is just not there. It gets a little chilly at night, so I'll, I'll say that. you got to put a jacket on. But just looking up at the stars is amazing, right? In Chicago, in a big city, there's so much light pollution that you don't really get that, right? So um, amazing. You know, you go out there for the beach, the views, um, the quaintness, the tranquility, but then you look up and you get, you get a whole new, you know, a whole new perspective. And it was amazing. Um, so that was a, that was the second day that we got there, right? So we got there Thursday night. What I just described was Friday. So we come into our last day, right? Saturday. Um, I'm going to take a sip of this tea, though. All righty. So day three is our final day, right? So what what ha what's awesome is another one of our close friends in our group here um, was actually in Portland visiting a friend and for, and with his wife, right? So they come, they drive two hours to come visit us, and you know it's awesome. They they we 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 go get breakfast, but this time we just got it from like um they have these little booths out there, right? And they're like breakfast booths. You can get sandwiches, coffee, bagels, and I'm smashing. I love bagels. I don't eat bagels ever, but on vacation I'm getting bagels. So we we get some coffee, bagels, things like that, and we're 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 just ready to go do something, right? So we take my buddy. Um, to the Rockaway Beach, right? But then there's this train, there's this locomotive, this old school locomotive that will take you through the town, right? It will take you from Rockaway Beach to Garibaldi and back. So it's about an hour and a half round trip, like 20 bucks each. So we get on this 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 train and the views are just outstanding, right? Just amazing. Um, and uh, we just have a good time we're kicking it. Um, we're we're just looking at all the views, right? The whole coastal, the whole coast. Um, and again, it's just it's just amazingly gorgeous. So we head to to to, to Garibaldi. We they stop for about twenty five minutes. We go to a little bar. Um, we have a we have a drink. I get me a gin and club soda, and then we we come back, right? And like I said, views are breathtaking. And so then after that. Um, my buddy and, and his wife, you know, they go back to Portland. They have agenda too, but it was so nice of them to come by. Um, we get a couple hot dogs from this this stand that's right off the the train tracks, and then right away these this 
this these two dudes they come up to us and um you know i'm just thinking hey man everyone's friendly here they probably just want to chat know where we're from and i'm all with all about that now the the they come up to us and they say are you good people and i'm just like i i i think so and they they say um well um you know here's like a we, we have a church right up the road, right? And they go full Jehovah's on us. They're, they're like, we know where we're going, right? Um, and, um, you know, we're all sinners. And I'm like, okay, yep, yep, yep. Cool, cool, cool. Do your thing. I'm gonna let you get your plug in. And then they then they uh, they leave. All the while, we're trying to joke with them, just have like a real conversation. But I'm like, you know, you gotta do your thing, man. Give us your pamphlet. We got you, bro. Um, so, you know, they did that thing. We gave them our good energy. <laughs> so, um, and then, so after that, right, we've been out for a little bit. We come back. Um, and we do our thing and, um, we start playing Uno a little bit again. We go back to the, the beach house where, you know, we're chilling, kicking it. Um, and then, um, there's this, there's this last part that we're going to go to called, um, Short Sands Beach. And that, that beach is a hidden gem, right? It's in case it's closed off by, by mountains, right? And people surf there. Actually, there's actually people surfing there when we went there. There's a little waterfall there. And you know, the vibe out in Oregon is amazing, right? So all these places that we drove through, if you recall, on the, when, I, when we first got there, we drove at night, so I couldn't see anything. But when we when the sun came out and we drove through the places, we were driving through literal mountains, seeing the whole coast. We would pull off and just be in awe, take pictures, and be like, damn, I can't believe nature like this actually exists in real life because we don't see it like that in Chicago, right? So scenic views, if you don't do anything in Oregon, just go see, just go check out the views, right? It, they're amazing. That's an attraction enough. So we go to Short Sands Beach, right? And, you know, there's just... Like let me t- let me describe to you the vibe, right? So so as we walk along the beach, there's there's one guy playing playing his guitar, right? And there's like a there's people around him, and there's a fire, and they're just listening to him play his guitar. We we go a little further. There's there's a girl sitting on her you know probably her, her significant other's lap, and they're just kissing, right? They're giving each other soft kisses. We go a little further. There's some young kids kicking a soccer ball around, just laughing, doing that. Um, and then at the end of it all, there's a nice little waterfall that we were messing around in and shit like that. There was there was a huge dead seal that caught me by surprise. It was monstrosaurus, dude. So I look and I'm like, oh, fuck. I thought it was alive, but it was dead. Um, and I'm like, god damn. But just the vibe, right? Just the scenery, just the the just the way it hits you, the euphoria that comes along with this, this, these mountains, right? It makes you feel like, hey, I don't need to take myself so seriously, right? Look at this. Look at this amazing mountain range. Um, so we do that. On the way home, right, we stop by this dispensary called Mr. Nice Guy. Now, I want to go back and on the, on the flight tomorrow, what I want to do is I want to do a heavy dose of edibles, right? And I want to just knock out on the plane, so, so I pick up that, um, and then, so we go back and the guys are, the guys in there, everyone, you know, in the dispensary, everyone's real nice. They just want to like kind of tell you shit. Like, so we pick up these, these tinctures that are like 250 milligram. Me and my buddy get one. And, um, that's a lot, right? So, um, I have that for the next day. I mix it up with some liquid IV. Um, and that's another thing, right? Pedialyte, liquid IV, these things are a must because on vacation, I do not generally hydrate as well as I do at home. I'm always drinking water, but on vacation, it's hard to. So we were busting out the liquid IV, making sure we were all hydrated. So that brought us to our last night there, right? We wound on the night, um, knocked it out around 1231, um, woke up, did the two hour drive back, you know, took those edibles and just kind of kicked it. You know what I mean? Just kind of, um, I knocked down on the flight. As soon as I sat down, I passed out. Um, the next thing I knew we were in Chicago. And the funniest thing was when I got back to Chicago, I could not bring myself down, right? Um, to, to do something like, like I'm, 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 a minute task, right? Like, like going back to work was going to be tough for me because on that trip, our heads were in the clouds, right? We were in nature. We, we didn't see big buildings. We just were with each other with good, good music, good company, good vibes, right? I came back and I was like existential, right? I was like, man, 
everyone needs to change their perspective in life. They should go travel, you know, things like that. And I just, it took me, a, honestly, a couple of days to come back to reality, you know? Even my fiance was like, what the fuck is going on with you? But I was like, hey, man, you know, I'm just like, I'm just reflecting on everything that happened over the weekend, right? I am so lucky to be alive. I'm so lucky to be in the situation that I'm at, I am in. There's nothing, like, I can't, I can't be down in the dumps. I have to be up in the clouds right now. Um, but in any case, um, that kind of brings me full circle, right? Um, from start to finish was just such an amazing trip. I, um, I would highly recommend anyone go there. Again, I'm going to link all of the things that we did um, in the description. Feel free to check it out. You know, I hope you guys are enjoying the podcast. Feel free to leave me any feedback. And remember, only positivity. Thanks, guys.